let's start writing and using linear models. Basically, that means word problems, but all of the equations that we write will be in slope-intercept form of some sort. So that's what it means for it to be a linear model. Now, hopefully yesterday's, I, I don't like to use the term worksheet because that makes it sound like busy work, but hopefully yesterday's worksheet with the self-guided work really reminded you how to do this kind of stuff with, you know, word problems. This is technically an Algebra 1 skill, but I am... Well, for now, it's an Algebra 1 skill, but once we have remembered how to do the Algebra 1 type stuff, I will be taking it up to the Algebra 2 level later in the week when we start to compare different linear models to one another. This graph shows the distance an asteroid travels in X seconds. So we have X is time, and our Y value is distance, and I have it in miles. The first thing you need to do is write an equation of the line and then we have to interpret the slope. So first and foremost, we have to write an equation of the line. So this is actually several questions. I know there's only one question mark, but this is several things that you have to accomplish in order to pull this off. So the very first thing you have to do is write an equation of the line. We are talking slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Just bring it back to your attention. m is slope. B is the y-intercept. Can you just count on a graph to find your slope? Yes, if it's a pretty graph. However, I'm telling you right now, it's going to get you in trouble when I mess with the scale. And what I mean is, on the x-axis here, yeah, I'm going by 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That makes it easy. That makes life good, right? So if you just had to count rise and run, you'd be straight. But the problem is, on the y-axis, I'm going by 4s. And that's going to cause you a problem when you're counting up, down, left, right. That is why I asked you to use the slope formula on yesterday's work. Because I know for a fact that the scales are rarely going to be pretty. Our slope, then, is found... By using the slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1, and these are just names, divided by x2 minus x1. It means the first x, first y, the second x, second y. This requires you to know two different points on your graph. I handed you one because I put a dot with coordinates right here at 5, 24. And there is one more point on there that's incredibly obvious. It's zero, zero. Now, it doesn't matter which point you call x1, y1, which point you call x2, y2. That's not important. All that matters is that you don't mix and match. So y1 should always be with x1. y2 should always be with y2. And since I don't want to mess with negatives today, if I don't have to, I will call this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2 like so. This way, when I fill out my slope formula, it just says, and the y's go on top, it says 24 minus 0 over 5 minus 0. Well, that slope is 24 over 5. As a decimal, and you will have a calculator, this will give you 1.8. Excuse me, 1.8. What is wrong with me? 4.8. My apologies. 4.8. Much better. And because of the way this picture was given to you, you can actually see the y-intercept. Now, you won't always be able to see the y-intercept, but when you can see it, you use that bad boy. It's free information. In this graph, our y-intercept happens to be zero. It's right here. This is the y-intercept. That makes us happy. So when we fill out our y equals mx plus b, we get y equals 4.8x plus 0. And I am not going to write the plus 0. I'm just going to understand that my y-intercept was 0. So if you want to think of it as part A, write the equation of the line. That part's done. 
We did all that work to find the equation of the line. Part B then would be interpreting the slope. That means I want to know what does the slope mean to you? It has to mean something. I find that the problem that students have with word problems, it's not that they can't read. It's not even that they can't comprehend what they read. No, they understand what it says. What they don't understand is how to turn the words into math because numbers on the page don't equate to words in their mind. They have to have meaning. So what I'm gonna be trying to do is get you to be thinking about the meaning of the parts of the equation. As long as you understand the meaning of them, they should be very easy for you to write. The first meaning I'm asking, the first meaning I'm asking you to understand is what does this slope even mean? This 4.8, it can't just be a number. It has to have real world meaning for you in order to make these things easy. So what does it mean? Well, our slope is rise over run. Slope is always rise over run, correct? That means our slope is going to be the meaning of the y over the meaning of the x. I'm going to be scrolling a lot. So for b, when it was written as a fraction, the 24 over 5, this was 24 miles because it's a y value, over five seconds. What it did was it told you how far you went in a certain amount of time, AKA a speed. It's your rate of travel. <clears throat> so when we divided, we got 4.8. 4.8 miles per, which means divide by, second. This asteroid is traveling at 4.8 miles per second. That is the interpretation of this slope. It tells us how fast this object is moving. And when you give me an interpretation of slope, you generally want to divide the slope. You don't want to describe it as a fraction. You want to say, be able to say per something, per one unit. Instead of saying 24 miles every five seconds, like when's the last time someone described their speed? Like, oh, I drove 100 miles per two hours yesterday. Like, what? What the heck does that mean? It doesn't mean anything in the real world. But 100 divided by two is 50. I drove 50 miles per hour. That means I drove 50 miles per one hour. So when you give me your interpretations, you generally want the bottom to be a one. Does that make more sense? See, it can't just be words. The words, it can't just be numbers. The words have to mean numbers. The numbers have to mean words, and you need to understand that. And once you understand what everything is meaning, you're going to be straight. The y-intercept, even though it didn't ask for it, it's a good thing for you to interpret as well. But a y-intercept, which is said on yesterday's paper, is usually a starting value, a starting distance, a constant thing that doesn't change. So the amount you pay, real-world example. Has anybody ever had to call a tradesman out to the house, a plumber or something like that? Like, ever had family ever had to call a plumber into the house? Generally, you get charged just because they showed up. You get a charge for that. And then you pay by the hour, right? Or you paid for the part that they're going to have to use, the materials. Then you paid by the hour. Do the materials cost more if the job took them longer to do? No. You're going to pay more money overall, yes, but the materials have a constant price that does not change over time. So this would act as a y-intercept for you. And then you have a price per hour, and the per is where your slope is. So your y-intercept is generally a beginning value, a starting distance, something like that, a price that doesn't change. For this one, the graph shows the distance an asteroid travels in x seconds. Well, that means at time zero, it hasn't gone anywhere. That's what that y-intercept is telling us. Because if I was measuring how far something goes in a certain amount of time, and no time has elapsed, it's gone nowhere. So that's what that one means. So question C. The asteroid came within 17,200 miles of Earth. C. About how long 
would it take the asteroid to travel that distance? <clears throat> well, we have an equation, don't we? For part C, you have this equation. Distance, or y, because my distances were y's, equals 4.8x. This is a distance. Just by looking at the graph, y's are distances, and x's, these are times. Part C says 17,200 miles. They gave you 17,200 miles. So the question that you're asking yourself is, did they give me a distance or did they give me a time? And class, you would say, thank you, class. Thank God Dalen's here. So, guys, 17,200 miles. Is this a distance or a time? This is a distance. Because they gave me a distance, and this is what I mean by turning the words into something with meaning to you. You read this and you go, oh, this is a distance. I should have used purple because purple is the color I used for distance. Was it purple or pink? I think it's pink. This is a distance. Is a distance an x value or a y value on my graph? Lots of people. Distances are x values or y values? Okay, this is how you do these things. You go, oh, this is a y value. They gave me a y value. So then you now know where the 17,200 goes in the equation. 17,200 is a y value. You have been asked to solve for a time, meaning you don't know your x value, but you've been asked to solve for it. See, once the equation is written and you know where to plug crap in, it's really, really easy. But can you write the equation? Can you identify where to plug crap in because you know what all the stuff means? Then solve. Solving is the easy part. You can divide both sides by 4.8 and get some kind of answer. I don't know, so handy dandy calculator. 3,583.3 repeating seconds. That's a lot of seconds. If you wanted to know, it's a hair under an hour, if you cared. <clears throat> That's how you do it. This is the part where you ask me questions. Because about half of your chapter one test is word problems. You need to be able to pull these off. Yeah. I think it, maybe it would be easier if I did this. So you can see all of it at once. OK. So again, the process works like this. First, ask yourself, what do you know by looking at the graph? Or what do you know because of what they told you? In order to write an equation, you will need to find a slope. You can either use data that I gave you, or you can use points on the graph. Use a slope formula. You will need a y-intercept. If the graph shows you the y-intercept, woot, cool beans. You don't have to work for it. You just write it. If the graph does not show you the y-intercept, you have to find it, which I'll show you in a moment how to do that. After this, you just need to ask yourself, what does this slope mean? What does this y-intercept mean? And I will tell you, I have test questions that say, what is the interpretation of the y-intercept? Literally, a word description. What does that y-intercept even mean in this question? So it's not even asking you to do the math. It's just asking you to understand the equation that is written or understand the graph that you're looking at. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you have a test question that says, what is the interpretation of the slope, just like you saw me do right here? I'm pretty sure that's a test question. I mean, I'm telling you guys what's on your test. I don't believe in secrets. And after you have analyzed slope and intercept, now you get to look at the question mark, the question part of the question, so to speak. And you ask yourself, what did they give me? Did they give me an X or did they give me a Y? And you will know that because of your understanding of the question. And once you've decided if they gave you an X or Y, you plug it into the appropriate place and solve for the thing you're supposed to solve for. It's an Algebra 1 skill, to be honest with you. 
<clears throat> the Algebra 2 skill is going to be coming up later in the week. Can I clear this without anybody freaking out? No one's going to spaz? All right. Well, then we will move on to another question. Boink. This graph shows the remaining balance, y, and you should see remaining balance on the y-axis, on a car loan after making X monthly payments. So you see on the x-axis it says number of payments, and this is by month. Write an equation for the line. That's part A. Part B, interpret the slope and y-intercept. That's two different things. We have to know what the slope means. We have to know what the y-intercept means. Part C, what is the remaining balance after 36 payments? Cool. Let's tackle part A first. Write an equation of the line. Again, we're using slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. The m is your slope. The B is your y-intercept. Click your heels, because this was free. You didn't work for it this time. That's your B value. B is 18. We don't know the slope, and you are not going to do rise over run. Why, Mr. M? Because if you did, you would tell me that the slope is negative 1 half. You would say negative 1 over 2, but the slope is not negative 1 half. Instead, you're going to use the two points I gave you as coordinates, and you're going to fill out the slope formula. M equals, let me scroll down so people in the back can see. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, the, the ones and twos, those are just names. And it doesn't matter which one you call the first point, which one you call the second point. So I'll say... There's x1, here's x, <laughs> jokes. Here's y1, here's x2, here's y2. And we just plug them into our equation there. Let's see, y2 is 15 minus y1, 18. x2, 10 minus x1, 0. That gave me negative 3 over 10. I know in a moment I'm going to have to interpret that, so it would probably be better if this was a decimal. Just like describing speed, you wouldn't say 100 miles per two hours. That's weird. You would divide. This is going to give you negative 0 0.3. And like I said, our B value, 18, was given to us Right on the graph, we were able to see it, so that made us really happy. Our equation then is y equals, remember y is the remaining balance in thousands of dollars, negative 0.3x plus 18. Part A is finished. You have an equation. Great. But what does this stuff mean? It has to mean something for you if you want to be successful. And being on your phones is going to make it hard to understand the meaning of things. Part B. What is the meaning of the slope? Well, just like last time and just like every time, slope is rise over run. This is y's over x's. So if you were saying y over x, what you're saying is remaining balance over number of months or payments, whatever you want to say. <clears throat> the meaning. The amount you owe, and this is not what I'm writing, but obviously when you buy a car, this is when you would owe the most money on it, right? But every time you make a payment, the amount you owe on this car is going down. And that is why we have a negative slope, because our debt is actually decreasing. The amount we owe on the car is going down. So our remaining balance 
is negative 3 over 10 months. Huh? How about this? Negative 0.3 over a certain amount of time, over one month. Huh? You see, it doesn't make any sense as just numbers. Remember, y values are in thousands. So what it says is my slope or amount owed decreases. And we knew it was decreases because negative slope. So the amount owed decreases by. Now the y value is in thousands. So if it had just said three, we would have said decreases by 3,000 per month. But it doesn't say three, it says 0.3. Point 0.3 three. Point three thousand. Point three. 0 0.3 thousand is 300. So the amount owed decreases by $300 per month. So obviously your car payments are $300 per month. We're pretending there's no interest. Okay. <clears throat> That's not how the real world works, but that makes math easy. Did you know that that's what that means? When someone says like, oh, 1.4 million, did you know that meant 1,400,000? So 0.3 thousand is 300. So the amount owed decreases by $300 per month. That's what the slope tells me. The y-intercept is 18. What does that mean? What is that y-intercept telling me? Anybody want to take a stab at it? It's got to mean something into this question. Remember, this is a car loan. So what is the y-intercept telling me? The balance? When? Balance when? How many months? It's the y-intercept. No, the 18 is the balance. It's the y-intercept. What does x equal there? Come on, guys. When you're right here, what does x equal? Zero. So how many payments have you made? Zero payments. So if you've made no payments yet, what does this y-intercept implying? Come on, guys. I go to a car dealership, and when I left, the car dealership, I had a balance of $18,000 on my car. What does that tell you? How did that happen? Why did I have a balance of $18,000 when I left the car dealership? Because what? Tawny, what'd you say? It was a female voice. I'm sorry. All the way in the back. Oh, Nadia. But why do I owe that much? I'm just trying to get you guys to say the obvious thing here. You got the car. What I'm trying to get you to say is, this is how much you borrowed. This is your starting balance because this is how much you borrowed. That doesn't mean that's how much the car is worth. Maybe you put down $3,000 on it and you had to borrow 18. But the point is, your balance of 18, and by the way, thousands, means you borrowed $18,000. That's what that y-intercept is telling you. Part C. I believe it said how many months until it's paid off, right? Great. Part C wants to know how many months until it's paid off. So what you need to do is ask yourself. Oh, no, that's not what it says. It says what is the remaining balance after 36 payments? Ah, okay, cool. What did they give you? This 36 payments. Is this an X or is this, oh, we didn't, we never, oh yeah, here's, here's our equation. Payments, is this an X 
or a y value, looking at your graph, where payments x's or y's, this is an x value. They just handed you an x value and asked you to find a y value. So as long as you're reading it like this and interpreting the picture, you'll know exactly where to stick that 36. That 36 is an x. So we get y equals negative 0 0.3 times the 36 that they gave me for x, see I'm using parentheses when I substitute, plus 18. Handy dandy calculator. Negative 10.8 plus 18. Seven point two. It says how much is owed after thirty six payments. So I owe seven point two dollars, right? No. <laughs> what units are my y values in? They're in thousands, guys. It can't just be numbers. They have to make sense. How do you owe seven dollars? No, thirty six payments. Look at the graph. 36 payments. 36 payments puts you somewhere like right here-ish. How do you owe $7? Doesn't make any sense. The Y values are in thousands. So you still owe $7.2 thousand dollars. So what is 7.2 thousand? 7.2 200 is the remaining balance. Remember, if you want to figure that number out, you just do 7.2 and you multiply by the units, 1,000. That's how you're going to get 7,200. That is the remaining balance on your car. So after 36 payments, you still owe $7,200. <clears throat> now, what if I had made this a more interesting question? And by more interesting, I mean I took something that was very easy for a teacher to do. I took a question I gave you in the notes and turned it into a test question by changing one simple thing. He said, with his eyebrows raised to the ceiling. You're going to find that my test questions are basically my homework questions with different numbers in them. So if you're doing the homework legitimately and paying attention and staying you know, actively engaged with the lessons instead of being on our phones, then you're going to find that my tests look exactly like homeworks and it's easy peasy. So when I get emails from parents that are concerned because their kids got an F and they don't know what happened, well, I explain to them, well, you know, they're probably cheating on the homework. They're not asking me for help on it. Tests look like the homework. So since it's much harder to cheat on a test than it is to cheat on the homework, they're going to fail. It's a pretty simple answer to parents. What I'm getting at here is you guys need to be engaged with me. Talk to me. The people who did the best on the test, they're the ones that actually answered me in class and tried to understand and think about what we were doing. And everybody else that hoped, well, you know, we saw what the hope got them. A poor grade. We never hope in mathematics. Mr. Bowen has a poster in his room downstairs that says, have hope but make a plan. We need both. I, I like the saying, but my poster would say, screw hope, it gets you nowhere. That's what mine would say, because let's be real. I hope I win the lottery, but if I don't play, I don't win. I hope I get an A, but if I don't study, I don't. Just how that works. Hope gets you nothing. So a better question, or an equally good question would be, how long until the car is paid off? And you think, he didn't give me any actual information. Ah, yes, I did. I said paid off. So if it's paid off, what does that imply? You don't owe any money, which means I gave you one of the two values. If I owe no money, is that an X or a Y? Which one's money? Y. So if I say I owe no money, then Y equals zero and you would plug zero in for y and solve for x. Or, if it's a really good picture, 
you just look over there and you see that I owe no money when x equals 60 and you do zero work. I'm just saying. Either way, these questions are doable as long as you're interpreting. What did that mean? It couldn't have just been a number. It couldn't have just been a word. They mean something together. And then the last one, for today at least, no picture at all, a table of data, which is why I was making you find the slope using the equation of slope. Venice High School wants to have their prom at Lakeside Inn. Well, Lakeside Inn charges VHS a rental fee to use their facility. And then they sell tickets to VHS according to the table that you see on the right side. So they're gonna charge us a rental fee, and then if we need 100 tickets, it's gonna be $1,500. Rental fee, if we need 125 tickets, $1,800. Rental fee, we need 150 tickets, so on and so forth. You see how this works. Question A says, what is the price per ticket? What? What? Well, magic word. Per. What am I asking for? You see the word per. What are we talking about? So how many people read the example question in yesterday's thing where there was a blurb that said anytime you see the word rate or per or each, I'm describing the same thing, slope. Rate, per, and each are all telling you the same thing, slope. So question A has asked you to find the slope. And it doesn't matter which two points you choose, you will get the same answer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the first two. I'll call this x1, this y1, this x2, this y2. And you see they're labeled as x's and y's. When we fill out our slope equation, we get y2, which is 18 hundo, minus y1, which is 15 hundo, divided by x2, 125, minus x1, 100. That is 300 over 25. But I didn't ask you how much does 300 tickets cost me? Or how many does 25 tickets cost me? I want to know how much is one ticket, which means you need to divide. 300 divided by 25 is 12. So what is the price per ticket? Tickets cost $12 each. Part B, what is the rental charge just to reserve the hotel? Well, uh, you really can't see that from the table. So first thing you're going to need to do is understand what is that even asking for? We know that this is linear, right? We know that it's y equals mx plus b. You just found the slope. So what is the rental charge? I'm sorry? I'm not, what is the rental charge? I don't mean what's the number answer. What is the rental charge in terms of linear equation? How many times do you pay the rental charge? One time. And then once you pay the rental charge, the more tickets you purchase, the more you pay. So what does the rental charge represent? More specifically, not just Y, which Y? The rental charge, since it is the constant price that does not change, however you pay that rental charge no matter what, is your Y intercept. It's the constant, never changing thing. This is the Y intercept, which is your B value. Part B, y equals mx plus b. You know that m is 12. Does the picture tell you the y-intercept? Is it given to you over there in the table? No. Since it's not given to you, guess what that means? 
You have to find it. But how? What was given to you? Well, what was given to you was a bunch of x comma y's. These are all coordinates, right? X comma y. Hey, look, here's an x and here's a y. So take any one of the five points I gave you, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, and you plug in the x and the y appropriately. I'm going to go for the first one because that will keep my numbers small. 1,500 was a y value, so 1,500 equals 12 times and the x value there is 100. So 1,500 equals 1,200 plus b. You just subtract the 1,200 from both sides, and you will get your b value. Gives you 300. Your equation then, <clears throat> by the way, this is $300 is the rental fee. Rental fee is $300, and the students pay $12 each. So what we know is that y equals 12x plus 300. That's your equation. Part C. Part C is the actual question. All this work is required before you can do the actual question. How many tickets will be sold when the total reaches 4,500? This number 4,500, this is a price. So is this an X or a Y? Lots of people look at it, 4,500, is it an X or a Y? It's a Y value. And since you know it's a Y value, you know where you're supposed to be plugging in 4,500. Uh-oh. What is happening right now? 4,500 equals 12x plus lots of zippers for a classroom of people that got a D average on a test. It's amazing. We can tell where our priorities lie. Definitely not our education. So 4,200 equals 12x. And you divide both sides by 12. And that tells you the number of tickets that were sold. And it had better be a whole number. You can't sell partial tickets. 350 tickets. See you all tomorrow.